how you've clicked on to today's tropical tidbit for Tuesday over here in the Atlantic. We don't have a whole lot going on right now. We have Tropical Storm Philippe, who's still sitting over here getting sheared out of the northwest with lots of the thunderstorms getting pushed off to the southeast of his center. And you can see his center is half exposed over here. It was kind of funny last night. He tried to form some kind of an eye in here with no spiral bands to the northwest of the eye wall or whatever it was, but he quickly lost that and is now again very sheared with all of the clouds off in the southeast quadrant. And look over here in the central Atlantic. Just gaze at this for a while. What do you see? See this jet stream of cirrus clouds in here. Very, very strong jet stream out of the west. And all of a sudden, there's this massive shearing here. And the subtropical jet is seemingly way down at you know, 10 north latitude way down here. And this was not like this three days ago. What on earth happened? Well, this is very cool. I'm going to bring up this global satellite loop again. And notice what happened. Here is Ophelia going out here, so you have a sense of where the time frame of this is. Notice this front that dives down into South America here, this low in the southern hemisphere. Notice this front digs down in here, the tail getting all the way up into the Amazon basin. Notice that when it does so, the convective activity starts flaring up more than normal in the northern Amazon basin. T take a look at this for a second. The front comes in like this. Notice it. See this? the thunderstorm activity fires. What happens is that those thunderstorms are releasing a lot more latent heat energy into the upper atmosphere, increasing the pressure at those levels and causing the air to spread outward. And here in the northern hemisphere north of the equator, that air spreads out clockwise and it starts curving towards the east here because of all the thunderstorm activity. So all of a sudden, out of nowhere, when Ophelia was here, we had no shearing out here. And then all of a sudden, this front comes in from the southern hemisphere, increases the thunderstorm cell, and then we get a ton of shearing coming right off of South America, shearing the entire central and eastern Atlantic. And I just think that is so cool that the southern hemisphere here has directly influenced the Atlantic by sending a front down to the Amazon basin during their fall, I mean, sorry, their spring and our fall here as the jet streams do their thing. So that was that's very cool. We're getting directly impacted by the southern hemisphere right now. Now we are going to have to watch during the next several days for development of subtropical or tropical nature trying to occur in this area of the world in here. And we've been talking about this for quite some time, and we're now going to have to start really trying to look at this. If we look at the Canadian now today 9, we have a 979 millibar low in the eastern Gulf of Mexico, and the European by day 7 has a sub-1000 millibar low in the eastern Gulf of Mexico as well. And we can play around with which side of Florida this is going to be on, but the point here is that stuff is going to start happening, and it's because we get high pressure building to the north of this area, like we see here. And we've been talking about this forever. We get that high pressure to the north, over eastern North America, and then it starts forcing convergence down into this area near the northern Caribbean, Bahamas, and eastern Gulf of Mexico. I've been using that phrase for a very long time now, several weeks, and it is now coming to fruition. Now, we're going to have to talk about whether this is going to be subtropical, tropical, where does it form, where does it go. Well, first of all, we just now have the MJO starting to move over to our area of the world. So at this point, activity is not getting very wet in the Caribbean just yet. So the subtropical jet stream is still pretty far south in here. And you can see this front that's laying down into the northwest Caribbean. And when we see this front here, there's already a high building in over the central United States up here. And this is going to be the high that continues building eastward. We're not getting rid of it. So this frontal boundary is stuck in here. And the fact that it's already into the northern Caribbean implies to me that development, if any occurs during this weekend and into next week, will probably occur near the tail end of the front and will probably occur in the vicinity of Cuba. It may not be way up here to start out with. We may see it down towards Cuba and then move north or perhaps like this. I don't know which side of Florida this will be yet. We have to wait until we start seeing this potential for development start brewing down here. Things will start incubating and we'll see things get wetter down here. We'll get those winds to start coming into Florida from the east and then we'll see what starts to happen there and we'll deal with the situation when that comes. But the idea here is that we're going to probably try to get some kind of development due to the situation that we're dealing with. And if we look at the GFS, 200 millibar winds out to day 7, notice that the subtropical jet stream is right over the northern Caribbean. So there's a lot of shearing going on. There's not a lot of room south of the jet stream for true tropical development to occur 
under the equatorial ridge. So we have to have subtropical development if we're going to have any kind of development at all, and it would have to take place north of the jet stream under this upper level trough, which you can see over Florida here, where the upper level winds are fairly light. These wind, bar these wind barbs are very thin here and are not showing a lot of strong winds. So development would be under this cold pool loft. This indicates cold air loft, which can actually make things fairly unstable, given that the sea surface temperatures are still 28 to 29 degrees Celsius in the Gulf of Mexico and the Bahamas area. So if we get this trough to dive in here, the European shows this as well, we could get some kind of subtropical mischief near Florida and that could actually wind up into a fairly unstable situation because of all this cold air loft, which is why you see the pressure so low on the Canadian and the European. Sub 1,000 millibars on a subtropical low is not something you always see forecasted by the models. So there is the potential for a fairly potent event here with strong winds and rain coming to this whole area in here of the southeast Gulf of Mexico and Florida probably will be a nasty few days of weather. Even if we don't get true development, we may still have quite a few days with a lot going on. And notice that this kind of makes sense because see how the jet stream curves anticyclonically over here in the eastern Pacific. There's this clockwise flow of upper level wind sitting over here. And this is because a lot of heat is getting released. In fact, the models have been trying to develop a storm or a hurricane in the eastern Pacific near this time period. And this would make perfect sense because the MJO is progressing eastward. And so thunderstorm activity will be increasing in the eastern Pacific first, which means that it makes sense to have the ridge in here due to latent latent heat release aloft, which forces the jet stream to dive down over the Caribbean, shutting down true tropical development there initially, but allowing the chance for subtropical mischief to develop north of the jet while we have surface high pressure to the north incubating the area. And then, after we have this mischief going on for a few days, after next week, we may have to worry about the true tropical development coming out of the Caribbean because once the MJO moves over the Caribbean, this that's over the Eastern Pacific moves over the Caribbean, and then we get the upper level ridge in our neck of the woods, and then we will be able to force the subtropical jet farther north and allow the chance for true tropical development to occur south of it. And we can see that the MJO already starting to come back over here, more green color showing up indicating up upward motion and more thunderstorm activity in the Atlantic and for the next 5 to 15 days it stays very green in here. So there's a lot of upward motion to be had and the models are starting to forecast one of the top 50 MJO amplitudes in our area of the world that we've ever seen since measurements began. So there's a big chance for mischief to go on over the next few weeks and most of October may see the potential for threats down here in this area of the world and coming north out of the Caribbean. So we're going to have to watch this pattern very closely as time progresses. By this weekend we should start to see this area of the world look very messy. Whether we actually get true development or not remains to be seen. We'll have to wait until we get closer in on the situation and actually physically see what's going on. But you can see with this tail end of the funnel boundary sitting down here beneath a high pressure system to the north. Mischief has happened with this before. Homegrown development happens all the time with this situation and Florida and the southeast Gulf and Cuba and the Bahamas are probably in for a nasty stretch of weather with or without development. So we will be watching this with interest over the coming days. Alright, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.